TKO Group Holdings had no involvement in Vince McMahon's recent sell-off of company stock. It was revealed earlier this week that Vince McMahon was selling approximately 25% of his stock in TKO, which is the parent company of WWE and the UFC. Vince McMahon is expected to receive more than $400 million from the sale. He will still own approximately 8.3% of the company following this stock sale. While appearing at a conference presented by investment banking company Morgan Stanley, Endeavor and TKO executive Mark Shapiro confirmed that TKO did not participate in the recent sale of Vince's stock. Shapiro is the president and chief operating officer of TKO. He stated that TKO is not in conversations with Vince and does not know his motives for the stock sale, saying, we don't know his motives, his plans, or his timeline. He doesn't work for the company, doesn't come into the office, and he's not coming back to the company, and that's where we sit. Vince resigned from WWE and TKO this January in the wake of the lawsuit that was filed against him by former WWE employee Janelle Grant. Vince, WWE, and John Laronitis are named as defendants in the lawsuit. Vince is accused of physical and emotional abuse, sexual assault, and sex trafficking. TKO was formed last September after Endeavor's acquisition of WWE became official. Vince was executive chairman of TKO prior to his resignation. Vince also sold off some of his TKO stock last November. At the time, he sold approximately 30% of the stock that he owned. And while most of the headlines coming out of Mark Shapiro's comments have revolved around Vince McMahon, the TKO COO did reveal an interesting fact about the initial WWE Netflix talks. Shapiro said that in the company's talks with the streaming giant, NXT was the original point of discussion. The two sides eventually came to a five-year, $5.2 billion deal to bring Raw to Netflix, domestically starting in January 2025. In addition to all WWE programming, including premium live events, to Netflix internationally. Shapiro said that with the deal, they cracked the code with bringing live sports to Netflix and that the partnership alone de-risked the UFC-WWE merger that spawned TKO. He went on to say that the plan with Netflix is to be very innovative with the partnership, but that things are in the laboratory phase with possibilities. He wants to bring innovation to the deal with new technology, discussing how when he was with ESPN, they did the same with any new properties that came to the network. Additionally, he added that WrestleMania will see a big influence from WME, which is Endeavor's talent agency, with big celebrities coming in. And speaking of WrestleMania 40, during a Wednesday morning guest spot on ESPN, John Cena tease potentially appearing at WrestleMania. The topic of his attire came up during the interview. Cena was asked if he prefers wearing his signature jorts or three-piece suits. Cena responded that if we're talking WrestleMania 40, he hopes the jorts are there. If we're talking first take, he'll put a suit on. Dave Meltzer reported last week that John Cena's acting schedule would determine whether or not he can appear at WrestleMania. If Cena is involved with the event, it's likely he'll do something fun, short, and memorable, rather than something that would be deemed a physical risk. Cena, who turns 47 years old next month, wants to retire from in-ring competition before he's 50. Some more WrestleMania-related news. It was announced via ESPN that Bull Nakano will be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame over WrestleMania week in Philadelphia. She's the second member that's been confirmed for the class, joining Paul Heyman. And speaking with ESPN, Bull Nakano said... During my active years, I was able to get championship belts in Japan, America, and Mexico. But just one thing was missing. I didn't get inducted into the Hall of Fame. I wanted this. Finally, in 2024 in WrestleMania week, I'm able to get this. Bull Nakano started her career in all Japan women's wrestling and went on to make her mark in the ring globally. In the 1990s, Bull Nakano and Alondra Blaze's rivalry helped revive the WWF women's division for a period of time. Their feud included a match at SummerSlam 1994. Bull Nakano held the WWF Women's Championship once. She later competed for WCW as well. On social media, Bull Nakano wrote that she was honored to be the first Japanese female wrestler to make it into the WWE Hall of Fame. With Vince McMahon gone from WWE, this is the first Hall of Fame class that Paul Triple H Levesque has been fully in charge of. 
He tweeted about Nakano's induction, saying Bull Nakano is an unbelievable talent with an unforgettable look and that she's one of the best of all time. Bull Nakano was inducted into the Wrestling Observer Newsletter Hall of Fame in 2001. Additionally, Ilya Dragunov's challenger for Stand and Deliver is now set. Tony D'Angelo defeated Carmelo Hayes at NXT Roadblock on Tuesday to become the new number one contender. With this win, Tony D'Angelo will now face the NXT champion at Stand and Deliver on April 6th. And on to some AEW news. AEW has suspended Sammy Guevara. Fightful reported that Sammy's suspension is related to his no disqualification match versus Jeff Hardy at the February 14th Rampage taping. Hardy was injured during the bout when Sammy's knee collided with his face on a shooting star press attempt. The match was not stopped following the injury. However, Guevara gave Hardy his go-to-hell finisher before pinning him, which Fightful's report stated was not the proper concussion protocol. Dave Meltzer has confirmed the news saying that Sammy was told to pin Jeff Hardy and kept going with the key being the finishing move. Meltzer said it's unclear why the referee or doctor didn't just stop the match. This is the 30-year-old's second time being suspended by the promotion. He was given a 30-day suspension in 2020 following insensitive comments he made on a 2016 podcast spreading on social media. Sammy also attended sensitivity training courses as a result. Our own Brian Alvarez would later report that Jeff Hardy suffered a broken nose but was not concussed from the move. He hasn't wrestled since and there is currently no timetable for his return. Additionally, Mike Santana is no longer with AEW. His profile was removed from the AEW roster page recently and he hasn't wrestled for the promotion since the October 25th, 2023 Rampage taping. He defeated his longtime tag team partner, Ortiz, on the show. Fightful Select is reporting that sources close to Santana say he is done with the company. Santana and Ortiz came into AEW as proud and powerful in 2019, quickly aligning with Chris Jericho, Sammy Guevara, and Jake Hager as the inner circle. Santana wrestled for AEW just three times after suffering a torn ACL in the 2022 Blood and Guts match. His first match back was Stadium Stampede at All In. As for Ortiz, he's wrestled in AEW just once since his loss to Santana in October. He teamed with Eddie Kingston in a loss to Brian Danielson and Claudio Castagnoli on the January 20th, 2024 episode of Collision. Santana has been keeping active on the independent wrestling scene in the Northeast. This weekend, he wrestled Penta El Cero Miedo on a House of Glory show in New York and also wrestled Homicide on a show in New Jersey on Sunday. That's a wrap for this episode of The Latest. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.